Hello, welcome to episode 5 of the Minecraft clone tutorial series. Today we are going to be creating our first 3D block. This is going to require a lot of different steps, but the first step is actually getting the 3D environment in OpenGL. So, so far we've only been working with one face of the cube and it's been in a 2D context, but we're going to be turning this into our actual 3D game. So the way that you accomplish this um, is using matrices, and this is a bit of linear algebra, but fortunately OpenTK provides a lot of useful tools to make this a lot easier. So here I have a diagram of a simple um, implementation of 3D um, that's used in OpenGL. So here we have our object space. This is where we actually created, you know, we created the array of vertices and that was us creating our object in object space. The next step would be to apply a model matrix to it and this would translate it into world space. For example, whenever you play Minecraft, if you ever press F3 on Windows, you have your coordinate system with your X, Y, and Z. That is what your world space is essentially, is your actual space in relation to the world. Then we apply a view matrix to this, and this um, basically translates all of this into what is um, actually in your camera space here. So as you can see, this camera is able to see the top of the square the top of uh, the circle, the sphere, and then the top of the cone. And the last transformation is the projection matrix. And this actually gives it the perspective that makes it look like 3D. Um, so we have, as you can see, this, this flat square here can now be seen as the cube that it actually is. And this cone has a little bit of perspective as well. Um, so that's all you really have to do. And it's honestly not that hard in OpenDK. So let's go and get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to have to edit is we're gonna to have to edit our vertex shader. So if you remember, the vertex shader is what handles um, where we are going to be placing our, our vertices when we draw. Um, and so right now, all we're doing is we're just taking them from our data and just passing them through and we're not doing any changes, but now we wanna change this and we're going to use what's called uniforms. And uniforms are basically variables that we can assign the value from outside of our shaders here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section. I'm going to call it uniform variables. And here I'm going to do um, a uniform mat for, and this is going to be a model. Mat for means matrix for, because we want a matrix for, for all of these. And I believe this is X, Y, Z and time. So if you ever, if you notice the vec for here, it's the same thing. It's just got this time at the end here. Um, or not the same, but it's the idea that 1.0 here is the time. Um, so now we can use uh, create another one called uniform mat for view, and then uniform mat for projection. And now to apply these, make sure you have semicolons. To apply these, we're simply going to go between here and the semicolon, and then multiply all of them. And a huge note, and I wish I knew this before I spent like an hour trying to figure this out, but the order in which you multiply matrices does matter. Uh, you might know that the cumulative property of multiplication means that you can swap around any number and you can multiply them and it will get the same result. This is not true for matrices for various reasons. If you've ever taken um, calculus or linear algebra, it will uh, show you that that is not the case. And I, I just, it didn't cross my mind. I have taken uh, calculus and I've studied linear algebra and it just never crossed my mind. Hey, it does actually matter what order we uh, multiply these in. So you wanna do it first by the position that you send, then the model, and then the view, and then the projection. And this should be uh, your full on uh, translation, uh, your, your, tra your transformation matrices all set up. So now we need to go into our code and we need to put this together. So temporarily, we're gonna be doing this in our render loop. Um, this is not good practice in the future, but for the, the, the purposes of, a, of an explanation tutorial, this is fine. So I'm gonna go right above the draw elements here and I'm going to start it up. So I'm gonna make a comment on my, um, my transformation matrices. And here we want to create three matrices. So I'm gonna do a matrix four model equals matrix four dot identity. 
And I'm doing dot identity here because this basically makes a matrix four where all the numbers are one. And you want them all to be one and not zero because when you multiply by zero, you get zero. And we want to be able to apply um, transformations to our matrices and actually have them produce a result. So if they're all set to zero, then nothing we do would it change them. So we're going to copy this down and paste it twice. And then change the second one to view, change the next one to projection. And this one is a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight identity and changes to create perspective field of view. And this takes in a couple arguments. The first one is we're going to do math helper dot degrees to radians. And this is going to be the actual field of view of your um, of your uh, perspective here. Um, usually people do 45 degrees. Uh, think of this as the field of view that you can set in your game. I like to set mine really high, but for this tutorial, I'm going to do 60.0F. Um, and then the next one is the aspect ratio. For this, we're just going to do the screen width divided by the screen height. And then the next one is um, the depth near and the depth far. So the depth near is basically the closest distance an object can be for it to be rendered onto the um, the screen, and the far and the depth far is the farthest. So for here, we're going to do 0.1f and then 100.0f. Uh, so if it's this is basically setting our render distance. If you think about Minecraft, you have a render distance that you have, and this is uh, for various reasons. One of them is managing the amount of data you are rendering at a time. So now that we have this all set up, what we have to do is actually get this data and send it over to our GPU. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually get our data and send it to the GPU. So for this, we're going to create three ints. The first one is going to be int model location. And this is going to be equal to a gl dot get uniform location, and here we have to um, check, find it in the particular shader program. We're just going to use our regular shader program, and then we need the name, um, and so the name of this one is going to be model. And we're going to just copy this line and paste it down twice, and change the next one to view and to projection. Make sure they match here. Typos are a big deal here. Um, and then we need to change this over to view location and then over to projection location. All right, now that we have all that, we actually have to put the data into our um, into our uniforms. So the way we do that is we do gl.uniform matrix four since we're sending a matrix four. So this is uniform matrix four. And then we need to specify the location we're sending this to. So we're sending um, to our model location. The transpose is true. And then we need to send the data. And it says in the arguments recommendation here, it says REF matrix four. Um, and this basically means that we want to send it by reference. Um, so we're going to do REF model. That'll send it by reference. And now I just copy paste this two more times change this one to the view location, change this one to the projection location, then change, make sure to change these over to view and projection. And that's it, you're all good. So if we go ahead and run this, you will notice that we have nothing on the screen and this is on purpose. Um, the reason is that we created our object with the Z axis being zero for all of our vertices. And so what this means is that it is created right where our actual, like the origin is, which is where we are positioned and our view is positioned. So basically it is below the uh, minimum threshold to be rendered, which is 0.1 F. So it is not rendered at all. And there are a couple ways to fix this. You can manually change the um, the vertices here. However, I don't recommend this, but if you can see, I'll, I'll set it to negative one. And now we can see our square here. It's very close, but we can see it. I don't recommend this though, because this distorts things whenever you, you are working with world space coordinates. I would, I would recommend creating your uh, vertices relative to the world origin. So in order to account for this, we are going to um, use translations here. So for this, I'm going to get my model matrix here and I'm going to start doing some manipulations. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to do model equals matrix four dot 
create translation. And this takes in a vector three. Um, so here we can simply just do, um, I think we can do, let's do zero F zero F and then negative three F. You'll notice I don't, I don't have to actually put a vector three as long as you have three values, it'll work. It's a quick little side note. So now if we run this, you can see that our, our square is now visible over here, which is pretty cool. Um, let's say I want to rotate it. So the way we can do this is a little bit tricky, but we got it. A matrix for translation equals this, and then I'm going to apply the translation afterwards. Okay. This should do something. There we go. Okay. So let me go ahead and explain what was going on there. I'm going to open up a little paint here. It's really important to visualize these things because it's uh, it's it can be a lot to take in, especially in the beginning. So we have our square here, and this is the square that's being rendered. And whenever you um, are moving it in the negative Z direction, it is moving in this direction away from the screen. Uh, let me make sure I'm showing this. Um, and so basically you're, you're moving it away um, but if you if you were to rotate it, it's using this origin point here for the rotation. So if you were to rotate it 45 degrees, it would actually move over to here and then be over here. And considering our, our render space, our screen itself is this, it is no longer visible. So instead, what we are doing here is we were actually pre-rotating it. So we created this square and then rotated it first to our specified degree. And then we moved it back to the specified location. So then it is rendered right here. And then we have our screen and you can see it visible uh, in this correct location with the correct rotation. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but now let's go ahead and create a simple little animation for this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this value and we're going to simply um, apply use a variable to increase it over time. So for this, I'm going to go to our instance field here and I'm going to create a new section. I'm going to call this, um, let's just say like transformation variables. And I'm going to do a float y rotation equals zero F. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing this static 45 F, I'm going to do um, y rotation. And then I'm going to, afterwards, I'm going to do y rotation plus equals 0 0.01 F. And we might actually do 0 0.1 F, so it's a little bit faster. Um, but this should serve the purpose of um, rotating our cube. And maybe we should have done 0 0.01 F. <laughs> there we go, 0 0.01 F. And as you can see, it now rotates. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. It is very, very fast though. So maybe 0.001F. There we go. Now we can actually see it rotating pretty well. So as you can see, we now have 3D space. But our cube is not one pane, a one, sim one face. It is actually an entire cube. So let's go ahead and create this cube. Um, and for this, we're just going to have to modify our vertices, our texture coordinates, and our indices. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make a change to how we're creating our data, because in the long run, you really don't want to be just writing them like raw floats like this. So we're going to make a change to how we are storing our vert vertex data, because it's easier to move around different types of data than just raw floats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this as a reference temporarily. I'm going to do a list of vector three, which is a um, data type or a data structure that um, is provided by OpenGL or not OpenGL, OpenTK. Uh, and then we're going to call this our new vertices. I'm going to underscore the other one so that we don't it doesn't have an um, double de declaration error. And then we're going to do equals a new list vector three. And this is going to, we're going to actually do open and close brackets here. And this is um, essentially the same thing as 
the array for our purposes, but it adds some more functionality and it looks and is easier to use. So here, for all of our um, vertices, are, are, we're going to use a new vector three. And then we're simply going to take our data here and we're going to paste it in here. And I'm going to make one change. So it wasn't um, noticeable there, but um, we want to like we want to actually have this in our actual origin. And what you'll notice is that we are um, making this cube so that it is um, negative 0.5 to the left of the origin and then 0.5 to the right for the right face. But our Z is a little bit in front because it is at zero. So we're going to offset it so that the furthest ones are 0.5 in front of the origin. And then the furthest ones away from us are 0 0.5, um, negative 0 0.5 away. This way the origin is in our actual center of our cube and not um, 0.5 offset like how it was because now the z-axis does matter. So in our new vector three, we're going to do negative 0.5f. And I'm simply just going to copy this and paste it. And then just change these. So I'm gonna do this clockwise. So this is the left uh, left vertex, the or top left, sorry. This is the top left vertex. This is the top right vertex. This is the bottom right vertex. And this is the bottom left vertex. And so that way we, it's a little, a little easier to visualize. So this is that. This is over here, but there's a negative and then a negative here. That should all work. Um, texture coordinates we can also change. So let's go ahead and change that. We're going to do a list of vector two because we only have two, we have an X and a Y or a U and a V, um, which is the, the um, convention of how to, how to uh, call them. And I'm going to create a new texture coordinates equals a new list of vector three, same exact process, new vector two. Uh, this one we don't have to change um, because it's normalized. There's no, there's no issues with origin or world space here. So we just copy them all down, make sure they are all correct here and zero, zero, add the semicolon. And we can go ahead and delete this old texture coordinates and delete the old float vertices. So now it's a little more organized. Um, and then the indices are just a list of numbers. There is no actual organization of them in the terms of like an X, Y, and Z or an, or an X and a Y. They're, they're all just simply list of numbers. So you don't really have to change this. You can make it a list of unsigned integers, which I might do in the future, but for now, this is all you really have to do. So let's go ahead and adjust this in our code because as you can see, we now have some errors. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to adjust how we are creating this, our uh, VBO. So for this, we're going to do instead, we're going to do a vertices dot count, and then we're going to multiply this by vector, th the size of the vector three, which we do vector three dot size in bytes. And this is for our um, VBO for our vertices. And then for our texture coordinates, we want to do a little bit different. We want to do our texture coordinates dot count multiplied by a vector two dot size in bytes. And then for the actual um, data, what we actually have to do is we have to do dot two array and dot to array. And this is my, this is just, by the way, this is not a required step, but I do highly recommend it. Uh, it just makes it easier whenever we're going to be creating our own structs. Um, it'll be a little bit easier to use our data here. And I believe that is all we have to do. Now with that, let's go ahead and make sure that our code still works here. So I'm going to run it and we do still get our block, although as you can see, now it is rotating um, not about the faces, um, the faces center X, Z axis, but the actual block. So you can see it's kind of rotating like in like a merry-go-round situation. This is because it's accounting for the actual size of the block. So let's go ahead and make the block now the final step in creating this. So for this, 
unfortunately we cannot just create um, eight vertices because each of these faces have their own unique texture coordinates so we have to account for it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do left face or not left face <laughs> i'm going to do front face and then i'm going to do let's say right face and then i'm going to do back face and then i'm going to do left face and then i'm going to do top face and then i'm going to do bottom face um and the exact same thing for the texture coordinates however the texture coordinates are literally the same for all of them so you could just you could copy it correctly first and then just do that three four five six since there are six faces in the cube and then here we just have to take this and then manipulate them for each face so this does seem tedious and it kind of is but it's not as bad as it seems because a lot of the vertices are the same so it's not too bad so now it takes a little bit of brain power here to, to think about how we're going to do this so we have to think about this in the context of how we create coordinates in OpenGL. So we have our cube here and this cube, let's just create a little cube here and then do the, do the little dot dot dot. Sorry about my mouse sounds. So this is 0 0.5 and this is negative 0 0.5. So how are we going to create the, and this is negative 0 0.5 here um, in the Y, uh, I should specify. Yeah, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then this is negative 0.5, but it is 0.5 over still. So as you can see, for our front face, our, our right face, our, our um, top left is equal to the top right of our front face, and our bottom left is equal to the um, bottom right of our front face. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this shows that we can really just reuse a lot of data here. Um, we only have to create these, which we would simply do by changing the Z of our data. So now let's go ahead and go to our right face and let's change it. So the top left is now going to be equal to the, um, the top right of our um, front face. So I'm going to just copy that and paste it. And then the top right is now going to be equal to that, but further away in the Z axis. So we're going to change that to a positive 0 0.5. And then for the bottom left, or for the bottom right, we're going to take uh, the bottom right of our um, of our front face, and we're going to paste it here. But then we're going to move it back one again, and then we're going to take it and just paste it here without moving it. So this should render our right face. So now we just have to go through this process of really just thinking about how to properly create these coordinates. Um, and then once you do that, you should have a proper square working. So I'm just going to go through it here and do that real quick. Oh, and I just realized the mistake I made. I made this as negative 0.5 and not positive 0.5. This is my apologies here. Um, this should have been positive 0.5 because remember zero positive 0.5 is going towards the, um, the, the player or the position you, the origin and then negative 0 0.5 is going away. So my apologies, um, proceed as before. All right, now all of the vertices should be set up hopefully correctly. So let's go ahead and um, get the indices now set up. So for this, it's going to be a very simple process. So we're going to um, have the first face and all that all set up here, but I'm simply going to do this. So you see this pattern here, we go 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0. So we do first, second, third, third, fourth, first. It's, it's just that same pattern over and over and over. So we're going to simply increase the second to last one of our face by one, and then go up to um, three more than that, and then decrease to the first one we started. So it's going to be, for example, for the next phase, it's going to be four, five, six, six, seven, four. And the next phase is going to be uh, um, eight, nine, 10, 10, 11, eight. And the next phase is going to be 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 12. And the next phase is going to be uh, 16, 17, 18, 
18, 19, 16. And I believe that is only five. So one last one will do uh, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, and 20. And this should be correct because this is 24 vertices. And if we have four vertices per face and there's six faces, that is 24. So if we're drawing 24, that is absolutely correct. So now we should have set this up so that when we draw, we are drawing the amount of vertices inside of our indices here. So if we run this, cross our fingers, we have a cube. What you'll notice about this cube is that it looks really weird. And this is because of the way that we're rendering. OpenGL doesn't know the how to actually tell what is in front of itself by default. It actually picks a random order of what vertices to draw and like what and which ones to layer on top of each other. So we have to change this. And the way we're going to change this is literally two lines of code. So what we're going to have to do is on the on load here, at the very bottom of the code here, we are going to do one additional um, thing here. We're going to do gl.enable, and then we're going to do enable cap dot depth test. And then in the um, gl.clear, we are going to go space, and then we're going to add this uh, straight line here. And then after that, we are going to do another one. We're going to do clear buffer mass dot depth buffer bit. Now when we run it, we have our proper cube here. And I think that's pretty cool. So there you go. All good there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we can do some more things. We can move around and stuff. Um, we can move our cube and all that sort of stuff, but I'm going to save that for the next tutorial where we are going to be creating the camera class that is going to allow us to move around in 3D space. So with that, I hope this was useful. I'm going to, as always, provide the code in GitHub with all of the necessary comments as um, well as I will be answering all questions on my Discord server. Um, just I'll be on there every single day, so just uh, ping me, ask me the questions, and I'll um, definitely answer you as soon as I can. So thank you very much. Have a, have a good day. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. See ya.